Hello, brothers and sisters from the Botswana Church of Christ. I thought I'll make this follow-up video. And in this video, we're going to zero in on Act 2, or the fall. So in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, we read, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Let's zero in on that word crafty. So we're going to go open the web browser and go to the website blueletterbible.org. And when you go there, you can type in Genesis chapter 3. And we find the original Hebrew language. In Genesis 3, we can look at the word crafty. Well, that's translated crafty. And that's the Hebrew word arum. You can even hear the pronunciation. Strong's H, 6175, Arum. It can be translated subtle, shrewd, crafty, sly, sensible. And then what we can do is scroll down and see where else in the Bible do we find that word. And so, for example, Job 5 verse 12, we find the same word crafty. Now reading, and in this case, the King James Version, it says he disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform the enterprise. In Job 15 verse 5, for thy mouth uttereth thine inequity and thou choosest the tongue of the crafty. So in this context, crafty is a negative thing, right? But not always. Check out, for example, Proverbs 12 verse 16. A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent, same word for crafty, arum, Prudent man cover it shame. So in this case, being crafty or prudent actually isn't the positive. So putting it together, one of the important elements of what's happening in the fall, along with what we saw yesterday in that the human desire, the cosmic coup to want to be like God, includes us wanting to organize the world according to our wisdom and not God's wisdom. And the word arum, the use of that word, points to the rich wisdom literature we find in scriptures. And so again, going back to Genesis 1, the 27, where God makes us as his image bearers and he gives us things to do. What we find in Genesis 3 is that humans want to use our wisdom in how to be human and how to organize or, or order creation itself. And you find that strand of reasoning going through the Bible. And the fundamental question is, who's, who is the source of wisdom? Is it God who should be the source of wisdom or is it humans? And as sadly, the human answer is, the humans are the source of wisdom. But what turns to be, what, but what promises a lot delivers, in fact, devastation. So anytime we rely on human wisdom, we actually end up in a far worse off position than we expected, than we hope, hope for. So I thought I'll mention that aspect when we unpack the fall of humanity. But also I want to mention how Understanding these scriptures and the layers of nuancing or, or it's like peeling an onion can help us to explain the gospel also. So for example, so for us today, the primary way we explain the gospel is when we go through our study series that God's word is the standard. We were called to follow Jesus. Um, we sin and we need to repent and turn to Jesus. and um, get baptized and the cross is kind of the pivotal turning point in our studies with people now adding to that we could also explain the gospel through image bearing and the failure of image bearing and failure to be god's image bearing people and you can even use the seven acts of the divine narrative to help someone come to faith and you can also use this the wisdom perspective, how we rely on our wisdom 
and not God's wisdom. And our wisdom leads us down um, the dark path. And to be in the light is us turning to, which is repentance, and surrendering to, laying down our lives and entering into Christ, which is baptism, and trusting and relying in God as the source of wisdom and not ourselves. So ho hopefully you get to see that grasping these different aspects can help us to explain the Bible so much better um, and, and use whatever uh, approach that you find necessary with the person you're sitting across from. This, in some cases, the first approach would be really great. You, know, you show someone their sin in, in order to help them to know the grace that is offered to, to them. Um, in some cases, maybe that's not the best approach. Um, and so maybe it is an image-bearing approach that you can take. Um, and then in some cases, it's the wisdom approach. Now, any, you know, again, all paths lead to Jesus Christ. Uh, he is the king and savior of us all. And so it, it's not about one path being better than the other. It's just helping us to unpack the scriptures um, in a way that can help us and also be able to help others. Uh, thank you for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Look forward to our time uh, on Sunday. Uh, till then, God bless you and have a great week.